Welcome viewers to the fourth and the last segment of the second lecture for the online series of lectures for the course of Algebraic Topology 2. In the previous segment, we defined a very useful operation called bracket operation on P chains of a given cone uh, relative to a simply shell complex K. Um, we will start this segment uh, with the statement of a theorem and then then I'll prove it. Let me state the theorem first. It's theorem 3. It's on reduced homology of a cone. Reduced homology of a cone. If W star K is a cone, then for all P, the reduced homology group of the cone is zero. A general complex which doesn't need to be a cone whose reduced homology vanishes reduced homology groups vanish vanish in all dimensions it's important that they vanish in all dimensions is said to be acyclic is said to be acyclic okay so uh, we need to prove it first note that the the underlying space of the cone mod w star k of the cone w star k is is connected okay in particular mod w star k is connected even when k is disconnected it is, is connected even when The underlying space of the complex K is disconnected. Okay. So uh, let me see this thing in, in terms of a picture. Say that this is the the underlying complex, the underlying space of the complex K, which consists of this. It's a it's a, it's a one dimensional complex consisting of two line segments and a point. It's disconnected. It's immediate that is disconnected. It has two components. Okay, but what is uh, and and say that we have a point here. W. Okay. So this is K consisting of these two line segments and this point, and W is a point here. Now let us try to construct the cone. The cone is a two-dimensional complex, right? Given by this figure. This is W star K. And it's immediate that this two-dimensional complex, W star K, uh, its, its underlying space is connected. Although the, the, the base uh, the underlying space of the base of this cone, mod k, is disconnected. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so we see that um, the the underlying space of the cone W star K is connected, and hence from theorem one, one immediately sees that the zero homology group of the cone is isomorphic to the group of integers. Now using theorem, so this, so we arrive at this using theorem one. Okay. Since the underlying space of the cone W star K is a is, is a connected topological space by use of theorem one, we arrive at here. Now using theorem two, which relates the zeroth reduced homology group with the ordinary homology group, zero ordinary homology group, we see that the the zeroth reduced homology group of the cone vanishes, right? Is equal to zero. It follows from theorem two. So, uh, so we see it for the zero. Uh, you know, when p is zero, right? Now we have to consider the case when p is uh, strictly positive. Okay, let let us see what happens when p is strictly positive. So we consider the case p greater than zero. Let z sub p be a p cycle on the cone w star k. We want to show that z p bounds. So it, it will prove that any p cycle on the cone bounds. Okay. So how do we prove it? So let us first decompose this p cycle z p in the following way. We are going to write z p as c p plus w comma d p minus one. So um, where C sub P it um, consists of the terms carried by the the complex K. Okay. So um, C sub P consists of the terms carried by only K the base of the cone and d sub p minus 1 is a p minus 1 chain of k okay so in this decomposition c sub p is a p chain carried by k and d sub p minus 1 is a p minus 1 chain on k. Okay. We'll first show that z p minus del p plus 1 w comma c p is equal to 0 this is something that we need to show first and let me let me tell you first what what this thing will achieve if if you are able to show this that this equality holds then it will follow that the p cycle uh, 
um, Zp bounds. This is the first thing. Okay. And then this guy in turn will mean that there is no non-trivial P cycle that does not bound okay which means that whatever P cycle we choose that will always bound so there is no non-trivial P cycle that won't bound okay and hence and hence one will arrive at reduced homology group of the cone in dimension p is equal to which is of course equal to HP because uh, because if if P is strictly positive the reduced homology coincides with the ordinary homology that that we already know and so um, uh, uh, but but since there is no non-trivial uh, p-cycle that 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 does not bound the 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 p etymology group has to vanish okay okay so uh, so the, these will be achieved so we will be able to show that the reduced the pH reduced homology group of of the cone is trivial if we are able to show this show that this equality holds okay now by direct computation by direct computation one obtains the following z sub p minus del p plus one w comma c p is equal to so we know that Zp is equal to Cp plus W comma D sub P minus 1, right? And so uh, we leave it as it is. Del P plus 1 W comma Cp. Okay. And um, we, we know that delta p plus 1 w comma cp is equal to cp minus um, w comma um, del p cp so we have proved it earlier let me let me tell you which what was the equation number? It was equation number 14. Equation number 14. Okay, so using that equation, 
we write it as cp plus w comma d sub p minus 1 minus cp minus w comma del p cp okay and it means that the cp cancels against the cp so that we just have then we use the the linearity property of the bracket operation since this is also this bracket guy is also a, a group homomorphism right okay so this can be written down as uh, the bracket of w with uh, dp minus 1 plus Um, plus del p c p right using uh, fourteen and linearity of the bracket operation okay good. And uh, we write it as W comma E sub P minus 1. Let me erase this front part where, where E sub P minus 1 is equal to, is taken to be equal to D sub P minus 1 plus del P C P is a P minus 1 chain on K one chain p minus one chain on the on the base of the cone k okay now remember zp since uh, zp was taken to be a cycle right zp was assumed to be a cycle Therefore, one must have del p acting on zp to be zero. From zp minus del p plus one acting on bracket of w and cp, equal to this guy, right? The bracket of w and p e sub p minus 1 we have seen it earlier so from this equality one of one then obtains del p z p minus del p del p plus 1 w comma c p is equal to del p acting on w comma e p minus one and this vanishes right because we already know that del p composed with del p plus one is equal to zero okay boundary of a boundary operator is zero so um this implies so on the left side we have zero because that p is a cycle on the left side we have zero and on the right side we know the explicit expression of this guy right and this is going to be equal to e sub p minus one minus w comma del p minus one e sub p minus 1 if p is strictly greater than 1 this is by using 14 okay and if p is equal to 1 then it's going to be e sub p minus 1 then e, e this is just e sub 0 which is a 0 chain 
minus the augmentation map acting on E sub P minus 1. These are all zero chains now since we are taking P to be equal to 1. And this is when P is equal to 1. This is by using 13. Let me check if we get it by 13. Yes, we get it by 30. Okay. Therefore, so let me erase this bottom part. Therefore, E sub P minus 1 is equal to epsilon the augmentation map acting on E sub P minus 1 times W if P is equal to 1 and is equal to the bracket between W and del P minus 1 E P minus 1 if P is greater than 1. We number this by 15. Now we know that the, the uh, what we have on the left side is a p minus one chain carried by k. Is a p minus one chain carried by k. But fifteen suggests that the right side contains contributions. That is carried by, so you see that, um, so that, so the, the, the right side of 15 tells us that the, uh, um, it, it's, it's the expression that we have on the right side is not entirely carried by K. There are contributions um, carried by W star K set minus K. Okay. Here and here. So, what can be a possible solution? The only solution is that E sub P minus 1 is identically 0. Right? On the left, the left side is carried by K. Whereas the right side is carried by this guy, the only solution is that E sub P minus is identically zero. Okay, so therefore we conclude that we conclude that um, ZP minus del p plus 1 bracket w comma cp is equal to w comma e sub p minus 1 since e sub p minus 1 is identically 0 this guy is 0 okay which means that the p cycle z sub p that we started with bounds and the result follows qed Good. Now the main theorem of today's lecture. So theorem 4, let me state it first and then I'll prove it. Theorem 4. Let sigma be an n simplex. The complex K sub sigma consisting of sigma and all its faces is acyclic. 
So the reduced homology group of of this guy, k sigma, in all dimensions, vanish. If n is greater than zero, let in that case let sigma to the n minus one denote the complex whose polytope or the underlying space is BD sigma, boundary of sigma. Okay, now orient sigma, then the reduced homology group in dimension n minus 1 of this guy sigma to the n minus 1 is infinite cyclic and is generated by the chain delta n sigma of course this is an n minus 1 chain since sigma is an n chain okay uh, furthermore so this is infinite cyclic furthermore the reduced homology uh, the reduced homology uh, group of this guy sigma n minus 1 okay uh, vanishes whenever i is not equal to n minus 1 okay okay now let let us prove it okay so the proof uh, actually uh, depends on some group theoretic uh, results um, which are uh, which are very easy to understand and i hope uh, from your abstract algebra um, knowledge you will be able to understand them because you you have sufficient background of group theory to understand the proof okay so let's get started since k sigma is a cone k sigma is the is the cone that you get out of the n simplex and all its faces so we, we have seen the in the in the first example of cone that uh, the complex that you get out of this n simplex is is actually a cone okay um, and by theorem 3 it is acyclic okay now let us com compare the chain groups groups of k sub sigma and sigma to the n minus 1 So they are all equal except in dimension n. They are equal except in dimension n. Okay. So I'll get back to it in, in a short while. Uh, but before that, I want to uh, draw, draw a sequence of maps. Okay, so let me erase the statement and the the beginning of the proof so let me so I'm going to keep this uh, sequence for a while uh, so let me draw it uh, at the at one corner so um, uh, so there is a zero on the on the left and then 
uh, there is this map delta n plus 1 which will take us to c and k sigma and then delta n okay and we know that from the nature of uh, the boundary operator is going to be c n minus 1 k sigma which which is the group of n minus 1 chains on the on the complex k sigma and then we have um, delta n minus 1 dot 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 and then towards the end we have delta 1 and this is the group of zero chains on k sigma and then this is the augmentation map which maps this group of zero chains to the group of integers okay so here i have zero again and there is this map delta n prime so uh, the boundary operators in the in the in the second line are all denoted by um, uh, prime so they are primed boundary operators uh, so uh, then I have C n minus 1 Sigma to be n minus 1 this is the group of n minus 1 chains on the boundary Sigma n minus 1 then I have Delta prime n minus 1 we'll see that they happen to be the same and then dot 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 I have delta 1 prime C0 Sigma to the n minus 1 and then they are the same um, this is the group of integers again they are equal we'll see that they are all equal okay okay Now, for n positive, Cn minus 1, K sigma is equal to Cn minus 1, sigma to the n minus 1, okay? Which means that the n minus 1 chains on the cone is the same as the n minus 1 chains on the boundary of the cone okay where the the cone itself is an n simplex so how do we see this recall that n minus 1 chains on a given complex are maps from the orient from the oriented n minus one simplices to the group of integer the additive group of integers, right? We have seen it in our uh, uh, um, from the course on algebraic topology one. Now, since the underlying space of the boundary of sigma is equal to sigma to the n minus one, okay. right okay um, it's not sigma to the n I think I should uh, so this is right so boundary of sigma is uh, sigma to the n minus 1 this is the complex this is the complex okay and the underlying space of which is 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 boundary of sigma right like 
think I so I have to this is I think I think this one is correct so uh, the so by boundary of Sigma BD Sigma I mean a topological space okay which is the underlying space of this complex sigma n minus 1 okay this is this is given in the statement of the theorem so this is this guy is a complex and by bd sigma we mean a topological space which is the underlying space of this complex sigma n minus 1 sigma to the n minus 1 okay good So uh, there, there is a sort of uh, notational complication here. Although sigma is an n simplex, BD of sigma is not an n simplex. BD of sigma is the underlying space of the boundary of sigma. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so th since this holds the n minus 1 simplices of k sigma okay k sigma is the cone itself which is the n simplex right so the n minus 1 simplices of k sigma coincide with the n minus 1 simplices of sigma n minus 1 so so the n minus 1 simplices of this complex is the same as the n minus 1 simplices of this complex they are the same so since the n minus 1 simplices are the same the corresponding n minus 1 chains of the respective complexes also coincide okay and we immediately see that hi of k sigma is equal to hi of sigma to the n minus 1 for i is not equal to n minus 1 So everything coincides when i is not equal to n minus 1 okay so um, from which we we immediately see that the the reduced homology um, the reduced homology groups also coincide when i is not equal to n minus 1 Okay. Good. Now, the 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 subtle situation occurs when i is equal to n minus one. Let us compute the homology in 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 the case when um, i is equal to n minus one. So um, H sub N minus 1 
sigma to the n minus 1 is supposed to be equal to z n minus 1 sigma n minus 1 portioned out by the n minus 1 boundaries of sigma n minus 1 okay and this is nothing but this is the kernel so let me uh, so here uh, look at here delta n prime uh, takes 0 to cn minus 1 and then delta n prime delta prime n minus 1 so um, so this is kernel of delta prime n minus 1 modded out by the subgroup image of delta prime n can see from here so so the kernel of this map modded out by the image of this map here everything is happening here and that's the n minus 1 homology group of sigma n minus 1 okay and because of because what we have on the left hand end is is trivial is a trivial group so the image of this guy here is also trivial because del prime n is is a group homomorphism so the image of this guy here has to be trivial and this guy is trivial meaning that this is just kernel of delta prime n minus 1 Okay, so because of the equality here, it's important to note that um, delta m, so everything coincides. All the boundary operators are the same for m is less than or equal to n minus 1. Okay, so... Um, so that tells us that this is just kernel of del del n minus one. Okay, and now observe that. So consider the sequence C N K sigma. The group of n chains on the on the cone k sigma to uh, the group of n minus one chains on the cone k sigma and goes on like that forever. Uh, so no, until we arrive at uh, c zero of uh, k sigma, then this is delta n minus one. This is delta n. Okay, and uh, since k sigma is a cone by by theorem 3 the reduced homology group of k sigma is equal to 0 for all i this follows by the theorem 3 okay so in particular in particular for a given n which is greater than 1 h tilde n minus 1 k sigma is the same as the the ordinary homology because n is greater than 1 is equal to 0 so we get that for n greater than 1 right the, mm, um, the ordinary homology of the complex k sigma is 0 what does it mean 
it means that um, the kernel of delta n minus 1, the kernel here is equal to the image of delta n here. Okay? Which means that um, all the n minus 1 cycles bound. So there is no non-trivial n minus one cycle that does not bound, and hence they are equal. So from here, we see that this is equal to the image of delta n. So now, we know that the group of n chains on the complex case sigma is, is 3 abelian, right? Where the elementary n chains on the complex case sigma form a basis that forms a basis that collection forms a basis of this free abelian group it's free abelian with basis being the set of elementary n chains So um, there is only one elementary n, n chain here. So since k sigma is an n simplex, so there is only one elementary n chain, sigma itself, right? So there is one elementary one chain only which is sigma okay so what do we see we see that cn of k sigma is isomorphic to z with sigma being the generator of this free group cn of k sigma okay good now uh, since this holds which is infinite cyclic this is this guy is infinite cyclic okay because this is isomorphic to the 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 infinite group um, z so this is infinite cyclic since delta n which is which is an operator from the group of uh, n n chains on k sigma to group of n minus 1 chains on k sigma this guy is a group homomorphism, this operator, group homomorphism, and this is infinite cyclic. This is a cyclic group in particular. So this is this is a group homomorphism, and there, there is a group theory exercise, so you should be able to do it by yourself. I think we did it in the abstract algebra course. Uh, the homomorphic image of a cyclic group is also cyclic. Okay, so which means that image of delta n is cyclic, 
which is a subgroup here and this has to be cyclic okay okay so we just saw that image of delta n image of delta n is cyclic okay and uh, it follows from the fact that the homomorphic image of a cyclic group is also cyclic now uh, so it, it, it's an easy group theory exercise as I said and when you do the exercise you will see that since sigma is 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 the generator generator of the the domain group of the 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 group homomorphism delta n cn k cn of k sigma um, so during working out during solving this problem or during the proof of this fact that the homomorphic image of a cyclic group is also cyclic when you try to do that you will see that the 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 generator of the image is going to be uh, the image of the generator which means that delta n sigma is going to generate is the generator of image of delta n so this is a cyclic group as we have just seen and delta n sigma is the generator of this cyclic group okay all right so let me uh, write this boundary operator again this is a um, group homomorphism from the group of n chains to the group of n minus 1 chains on sigma and we know that this uh, this codomain of this group homomorphism is a free abelian this latter group is free abelian and hence is torsion free okay now image of delta n is a cyclic subgroup of the torsion free group torsion free group c n minus 1 of k sigma okay so any any element here any element in the image of delta n in the um, in image of delta n is infinitely generated okay infinitely generated in other words there is no element of finite order in image of delta n since it's torsion free since image of delta n is torsion free which proves that image of delta n this cyclic subgroup is infinite image of delta n is infinite 
and we have proved earlier that it's cyclic and hence image of delta n is infinite cyclic okay so we have seen that for n greater than 1 h sub n minus 1 of sigma n minus 1 is equal to uh, the reduced homology group Okay, this is the uh, image of, uh, this guy is the image of delta n. We have seen earlier that this is the image of delta n. So this, uh, the reduced homology group is infinite cyclic, is infinite cyclic, since the image of delta n is infinite cyclic, and is generated by, and is, generated by del n sigma since image of delta n is generated by del n sigma okay good so this is the case when n is greater than 1 so the argument for n equal to 1 is exactly similar so just so you are here now So n minus 1 is equal to 0 when n is equal to 1. Okay, so you are in this part of the sequence of this uh, homomorphisms. Okay. Um, so what, what, what you need to do is that the arguments that we have presented for n greater than 1, there just replace this maps delta n minus 1 replace delta n minus 1 with epsilon the augmentation map and you you get the result okay so i leave it as an exercise so just uh, so apply all the arguments uh, word to word just by replacing delta n minus 1 with the augmentation map and you you get the result All right, so this is what we wanted to do, um, QED. So now uh, um, a list of exercises. I just give two exercises. Um, I suggest two exercises, suggested exercise. Exercises. Um, section 8, problem number 1. It's on suspension, on the concept of suspension, do it. And in section seven, there is this problem number one. So remember that in the in the cat language of category theory, uh, epimorphism is used for surjective maps in the language of category theory epimorphism means surjective maps so for monomorphisms and epimorphisms for the detail of these things you can refer to our category theory lecture notes uh, uh, they are available on BUX, I believe. Okay, so thank you for attending this last segment of the second lecture.